G'day and welcome to Dave's Model Workshop. Um, today I'm going to be doing a tutorial for you on how to paint tools for armoured vehicles. Um, specifically German tools, they tend to have the most variety and the most different techniques you have to cover off. Um, so yeah, I've got my Tiger 1 Africa Core Tiger that I've got a diorama here. <laughs> Great introduction Dave. Got my Tiger 1 here, and um, you'll see that there's a few tools on this. So we've got a uh, shovel, sledgehammer, crowbar thing, we've got the jacking block. If I move that over, over here you can see we've got the wire cutters, and we've also got the tow line and rods, gun cleaning rods, I guess they count. And round the back here, a bit awkward to get to. We have got the jack. You can just see it under the air filters there. So this jacking point here. So each of those requires a different technique. Um, let's get some light back on the subject. Cool. So uh, I'm doing this video in collaboration with Panzermeister 36. Uh, he's also doing his version on how to paint tools for armor. Um, if you have never checked out his channel, I definitely recommend it. He's incredible. It's Panzermeister36, P-A-N-Z-E-R-M-E-I-S-T-E-R-3-6. I'll put a link to his channel at the end of this video. But yeah, he's doing his own version. Uh, he lives in Canada. I live in Australia. I checked online a little while ago, and today here in Melbourne, it's a 37 degree day, which I think is like 99 degrees Fahrenheit. It's stinging hot summer. Uh, where he lives in Canada, it is uh, minus 12 degrees right now, which is 10 degrees Fahrenheit. So I've got the problem of my paints will dry really fast in this heat. Uh, he has the problem of he's freezing his ass off. <laughs> hey, Panzermeister. Uh, so let's get stuck in. Let's deal with each of these in turn. So. We'll start off, I guess, the, the the most fundamental thing is, yeah, for Germans, you've got all these different varieties. So you've got wooden handles, you've got the bare steel of things like shovel blades or uh, or sledgehammer heads. Uh, the wire cutters, they have Bakelite handles on a German tank. Um, so that's a slightly different colour again. And you've also got things like your jacking blocks, which are natural wood. You've got the handles, which are natural wood. And you've also got the jack, which is basically whatever colour the tank is. On allied armour, it's slightly different. So, let's bring my Sherman over here. On allied armour, there are stories of them just painting everything olive drab. It's up to you as, an, as a modeler. You know, you can paint your tools olive drab if you want. To me, that's boring as hell. I still like to get a bit of natural wood in there. Um, I think it's much more interesting and a bit more aesthetically pleasing and a bit of, you know, natural metal there, a bit of gun metal or steel. But, you know, it's up to you. If you want to paint the whole thing a olive drab, go for your life. Who am I to stop you? So, let's start off with first steps for interesting tools for armour. So I've got here some fairly representative tools in 1 35th scale for German armour. Uh, they come from this, let's get some focus, the German Panther Type G by Tamiya 1 35th, which is probably next on my to-do list for building. Um, some items that we have, we have a wooden jacking block, we have an axe, so we'll be able to show both the metallic effect here and also the wooden handle. Same with the shovel, metallic effect, wooden handle. Uh, we've got this toe block thing which will be just all about the metallic. And we've got the wire cutters which is all about the metallic. And the Bakelite handles which are these two bad boys here. So, first steps. Let's move on. Which shall we do first? Let's do metallics first since that tends to be the most common. Mm. Let's get stuck in. So for metallic colours, your first step is to just paint the base, plain old, flat black. Uh, I'm using Tamiya enamel here, 
and you can use whatever you want to. There's nothing special about this technique. Um, and yeah, it is purely just a plain old flat black coat. I'm not going to show you how to do that because I'm sure you guys know how to do that. So there we go, flat black, painted on. Let's just leave that to dry for an hour or two. Nothing special. Okay, so my black has dried overnight and now it's time to get the metallic effect on. So I dry brush over the black with a metallic colour. For steel tools, I generally use gunmetal to get some focus. Um, you can also use dark iron if you want to or um, XF56 which is like metallic grey. Look, really, it's yeah. It's up to you, whatever you think works. And basically, use a manky old tooth, uh, toothbrush, manky old paintbrush. You don't want anything nice because it's all raw in it. Get a bit of paint on there. Wipe most of it off. And then all you want to do is just dry brush it on, leaving a little bit of the black still showing through to give you a bit of good if you can see it, huh? Um, leaving a bit of the black through so that you can still see the effect. Get most of that paint off again. And that highlighting, that dry brushing will really highlight all the edges. There you go, we've got a nice metallic sheen to that. Uh, the shovel is probably the place where it'll appear the most. No, need some fresh paint. Wipe most of it off. There we go, there's our metallic effect. Try and get it a bit closer there for you. There's your metallic effect. So if you wanted it to look fairly factory fresh, you could leave it at that. I'm actually going to do a little bit of weathering on it just to make them look a little bit older. But yeah, that's the effect. And you know, if you use like an aluminium colour, then it'll get brighter. Uh, if you use the iron colour, it'll get darker. Really, you know, it's up to you, but that's how it's done. Uh, it's pretty easy, so I'm just going to keep going on these and show you the results. So here we go. I have dry brushed each of the metal pieces. So all I would suggest is uh, where you get more paint on, try and make it areas where there would be more wear. So for example on this towing hook thing, I reckon you know these little pointy bits would get more wear. On the wire snippers, right at the ends here, would get more wear. Uh, I'll try and zoom in nice and close, but it might be pushing my camera to its limits. Oh, it's not too bad. So yeah, like I said, tips of the clippers, giving them a bit more. These sort of pointy ends of this guy, giving them a bit more. And yeah, you definitely get the sense of it being worn metal. So if you wanted to leave it at that, yeah, sure, go for it. I am actually going to take the next step further and get a bit of oil weathering on these just to give a slight element of grime and rust. Um, yeah. Let's see what we can do. So my my go-to oil colour for pretty much every piece of weathering and grime and dirt is Van Dyke Brown. It's just great stuff. It's dark enough and it's muddy enough to be versatile for pretty much everything. This cost me, I think, like $1.52 bucks, maybe five years ago, and I'm still going strong. It's great stuff, and this is cheap. This wasn't a fancy one. Um, yeah, you can use fancier and you get slightly less pigmentation in the in the paint, but you know what? For the scale we're using it at, save your money guys, really. So, I have splooged some out onto a palette here, and I am just going to get a little bit of, try not to spill stuff on it, I'm gonna get a little bit of thinners just on my paintbrush, and plop it next to it just to thin it down into a really thin wash. You can kind of see there what it's doing. And I'm just going to apply that 
to these fairly haphazardly and try and get just a bit of kind of griminess happening. So that's perhaps a bit too thick at the moment. And it just adds a little something extra to it. Yeah, you can see there. It just adds depth. It's like a Oh, I don't know, how would you describe it? It just, it just gives extra depth to it, absolutely. That's the only way to put it. So I'm going to try and just randomly splat that on here. Once it dries, it might get slight tidy, tide mark effects there, but I don't think so. Try and make sure that your first coats have all dried before you put this on, because it can definitely take your paint off if you're using enamel paints, uh, which I am. If you're using acrylics, you wouldn't have that problem. So I'm going to leave these to dry and see how they look. And that's as easy as it gets. Once the wash has dried, this is what we've got. Now look, you could leave it at that. I'm, you know, it's pretty good, I'm pretty happy with it, but I just feel like one or two of them are just a little bit too dark for what I'm after. So I'm just going to do a tiny dry brush with some flat aluminium. Um, I'm just going to try to keep this very, very, very subtle. Really don't want too much here. But it's really just to give a tiny bit more lightness to them, particularly on sort of the edges where they would wear. So things like on the shovel here, on you know, the actual edges, down the top here. There we go. That's actually, yeah, that's a bit too obvious on the top there, so I'm just going to smear it in a little bit. Yeah, and same with the others. Just, you know, let's get a bit more of that paint off. But really, you know, you could just as easily leave it as it was a second ago. It's just to add a little bit more subtlety to it, and, you know, make them pop a little bit more from a dark tank if that was the surface that they were on. Yeah, look, I'm happy with those now. Just not happy with this middle of this shovel here. I think I need a bit more work on that one, but you get the idea. It's quite light now. <laughs> anyway, you get the idea. So yeah, that is how I do my metal. Let's move on to other techniques. So painting wood, um, I've actually done previously three videos about painting wood. So if you go to my YouTube channel and just search painting wood, um, you'll find them. And there's three fairly different techniques. My absolute favourite, I won't go into too much detail here because there is a full video on it, but my absolute favourite, it's just so easy and you get a great result. So uh, Tamir here has already given us a really lovely sort of wood texture on this. Let's see if I can pick it up. Oh, a bit tricky. There's definitely wood grain, I hope you can see it, on that wood there, until I drop it. Anyway, there's very faint wood grain there, very, very faint. All you're seeing is my nasty fingernails, sorry. Um, yeah, but to me it's very handily given us that. Nah, it's not going to show up, sorry guys. Ah, oh, there you go, very faint. Very, very faint. You get a sense of it. Um, yeah, to me it's given us that, but let's make life easier for ourselves. So it's a really easy technique. Pick up a light colour. I recommend to me a dark yellow, but you know, anything like that. And just paint your wood bits. So again, I'm not going to show you how to do that, but we're going to paint here, we're going to paint here, we're going to paint this. I'll be back in a tick. Okay, there we go. Um, so look, again, there's nothing special about this technique. All I would say is just remember to paint 
all the way around, so don't just paint the top, paint the sides, paint the bottom, because you will see bits of that when it's mounted to the tank. Um, yeah, you can see, so it's, it doesn't really matter what light brown colour you use, just use anything that's lightish, because your next step will be to add a darker oil paint overtone on top of that, and that's where the magic really happens. So yeah, look, anything lightish that's going to have a bit of contrast with your darker colour, you're going to put on with the oil paint later. So I'm going to leave these to dry, leave them for maybe 24 hours, just so they're nice and fully cured. In this heat, they won't take too long. But yeah, I'll leave them overnight, and uh, come back to them tomorrow. And then you'll see the cool stuff. Now, once our bottom light coloured layer has dried, it's time to do the cool bit. So, once again, I've got my favourite oil paint, Van Dyke Brown. And I splooged a little bit out onto a palette. And you just paint it over the top of the light coloured bits. Um, so I'm just thinning it a tiny, tiny bit with a little bit of spirits. Um, I just use plain old mineral turpentine, it's nothing special. You can use artist's oil medium if you want to, any of that fancier stuff, but yeah, this works for me. And you want it just ever so slightly thinner than the way it goes on straight out of the tube. So this bit here, too watery. This bit here is just about right. And you just want to gloop it on. So. You want it to go on thick enough, let's try and get some focus. Yeah, you want it to go on thick enough that you can actually see a little bit of texture in it. It's not essential, but you don't want it too watery. This is my absolute favourite way for producing wood effects. You don't have to do a very good job with painting it on like this because the magic happens in the next step. I don't know why I'm being so cautious painting around these bracket pieces because I am just going to paint over those once I mount this to the tank anyway. So look, you can see there, I've put a great big glob on. Don't worry about it, it's all good. Because you can paint it off, this part of the procedure is not too essential to be perfect. You can actually almost start to see the effect we're after anyway. So I'm going to use that glob of paint that's still on here and paint my other tools, handles. Um, so this effect is really good for darker wood. I, I personally just like the darker wood effect. Um, if you wanted a, a light pine effect, as opposed to a sort of, a, I guess you'd call this, I don't know, dark pine mahogany, I don't know what. No, it's not mahogany, but it's definitely a darker wood. Um, if you wanted a a lighter effect. So let's get it in front of the camera. Um, just you know, sort of reverse the way it works. So paint a darker base. Sorry guys, you can't actually see that. So there, it's painted onto the handle of the shovel. And last but not least, if we don't knock over the camera, professional values all the way, my friends. Um, yeah, last but not least, the axe handle. You get the idea though. Um, so, did I say? Yes. So, as I was saying before I knocked things over and put my hands in front of the screen, um, if you wanted a lighter effect of wood, just reverse it. So, do a, a darker base coat and find uh, an oil paint that's a lightish colour for the top. This is just my personal preference. It's a pretty flexible technique. Okay, there's those guys. A little bit of focus. Bang. All right. Back in a second. Okay, now, I'm working pretty fast here today because it's a warm summer day here in Australia and my oil paint is already starting to dry. Um, if you were in a cooler place or it was a winter's day, yeah, not such an issue, you can you know, work a bit slower. But, I've grabbed me a brush. It's nothing very special, it's got quite tough bristles, so it's not a soft brush and it's a fairly cruddy old brush as you can <laughs> probably see. Um, but you want something that's got fairly tough bristles so that you can get the wood grain into this. And now, this is where it all comes together. 
trying to hold this down so I don't put my fingers in front of it. Okay, that'll work. Now, this is where the wood grain comes in. This is the cool bit. You can already see there the effect. And I love it. It's great. This is my favourite way to produce wood. It's the best. Same with the tools, with the shovel handle. If you find that your bristles are too coarse or too big, you can always use a pin or a scalpel blade. So, again on this guy. And basically just after scraping away the top layer of dark to reveal wood grain of that bottom layer. Try and keep it fairly random, try and keep it in focus. see the effect. So look, these guys are a bit small and this light's perhaps a little bit too bright, but I'll keep going, you get the idea. You can see the bits that I've scraped off with my scalpel blade there, and um, I'll show you what it's like in just a second. It's a pretty forgiving technique if you don't like what you've done. Just keep splodging at it with the paintbrush until you are happy. If it doesn't work, splodge on some more oil paint and then you know, leave it a minute or two and then come back with the rubbing brush and try again. Um, but I do find it gives a, you know, a pretty good wood texture. Um, now it looks a little funny until the oil paint dries, so at the moment it's got a kind of glossiness to it. That's just the oil paint. It will dry, or you can just you know, spray paint it matte. Um, towards the end of this video, before I you know, show you the final result for all these tools, um, I might put a little bit of pastel powders onto them just to you know, weather them a little tiny bit. But, yeah, it's a really easy technique, and it's fun, and, you know, gives you pretty good wood. That sounded so wrong. Okay, German wire cutters. So these little guys are a bit of a special case unto themselves. Uh, if you're an allied armour modeler, just ignore this bit. Um, German wire cutters were metal and they were covered with oh, lost the piece they were covered with the handles here were covered with like a bakelite material called tufnel um, which is basically it was paper with impregnated with resin and uh, it had a distinctive reddish brownish bakelite color i'll show you a photo of an original one here Yeah, apparently it was a uh, you know, special non-conducting thing so you wouldn't get electrocuted if you cut through an electric fence. It's pretty smart. Um, electric wires, anyway. Um, so for this, look, I'm going to start off with red-brown. Again, to me, enamels, that's what I'm using throughout all of these just because they're my personal favourite. You know, your results may vary. I know some people don't like Tamiya paints. I find they're fine. They do the job. And, you know, pretty reliable. So I'm just going to start off painting this red brown. Um, I want to make sure that they feel a little bit different to the wood that I've painted elsewhere on this model because I've gone for a darker wood shade and I don't want these guys to look exactly the same. So I'm going to try and tweak it a little bit with some orangish tinting once this is dry. So I'm not sure if that's in focus for you guys but I need both hands. Sorry. Watching a guy paint handles, it's pretty astounding stuff. I'm glad you tuned in. I can tell. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I probably could cut this bit. Uh, the banter, though. The banter. It's worth it. Um, yeah. So, look. I'm going to let that dry. Maybe even do a second coat, because it's not really covering up so crash hot. And come back. As with everything else on this video, I'm doing a little pin wash, 
with some Van Dyke Brown just to bring out those little details around the top and bottom handles. So now I want to give it just a bit of an orangish wash. So all I've done is mix a bit of red and yellow together, <laughs> clever stuff, and just thinned it really quite a lot with some terps. Um, let's see how this goes. Might work well, might not work at all. I want it to be a bit subtle, and at the moment it definitely isn't. But Cleaning up my brush a little bit. Let's just pat that a little on some paper towel. Bit of focus. And yeah, already I'm getting that nice kind of marbling effect that I was hoping for. So look, I'm happy with that. And it feels distinctly different to the other items. Maybe a little too much at the moment. Let's just put it down once more. <laughs> Let's stop moving the camera. And... Yeah, I feel that's pretty good. I'm going to leave that. But I'm happy with that. Nice little marbling effect. It's good. Yeah, that's your Bakelite. So I also thought that I'd show you how to paint painted over things. That's a very confusing way of putting it. Um, the jack here, for example. So on most German tanks, the jack was left in just natural metal. So you could do that in the technique that I showed you earlier. I haven't actually done that technique here, um, but you could certainly paint it black, dry brush it with metallics, you'd be good to go. But I actually wanted to show this as one that's been painted over by the crew out in the field. So, you know, they've painted their tank, and this would be the same for tools as well. Painting your tank and you know, applying camouflage, just spray over the whole thing, don't bother taking tools off while you do it. Um, so you know, you could just as easily do that to the handle and the metal of any of the other tools. Um, so for this I've painted it a dark iron colour and I'm going to paint it a colour, sort of a yellowy colour. I'm not quite sure what the final colour my panther will be, so I'm hoping that this will look like it's been you know, picked up from another vehicle that was painted a colour and just plonked onto the back of this one. You know, you may do, use what you can. So yeah, I'm going to paint it over in a sort of German yellow colour and uh, then apply some chipping. So all I've done is paint it, yeah, I haven't bothered with the black basing, I've just painted it in a dark iron colour so that will show through really nicely and now I'll just do a really fast hairspray technique. You guys probably know it, but if you don't, I'll make it as quick as I can. So you want to do this outside, because it's a bit stinky. Just got some plain old hairspray, nothing at all special. Here's my piece. And you just give it a quick going over with hairspray. Make sure you cover all the angles. Done. It's that simple. Leave that to dry for in a couple of hours. Right, oh, so since I saw you last, with this I have spray painted, airbrushed it. Um, I went with desert yellow, to me a desert yellow enamel, and yeah, it's just a plain old coat of paint, nothing special there. Um, now is the cool bit where you get to pop it in some water. So I've got a tub of water, plink, chuck it in, nothing special. I love this, it's, it's a cool technique. Um, look, you know, leave it in there for however long you reckon is necessary. Basically you want to see a tiny bit of reaction on the paint. Uh, looks like it's been 30 seconds. And I can already see here, if we get a bit of focus. I'm not sure if you can see it, but there's a tiny bit of bubbling on the paint. You can see it on that round piece just here. You can see a little bit of bubbling just kicking in there, and that's your chance to either brush it with a paintbrush if you want to get a kind of worn paint effect, or you can start to attack it with a scalpel. And scrape off chips. 
which is the effect I'm really after here today. So that was pretty fast. I mean, it was a fairly thin coat, but that was pretty fast. So let's just zoom in a little. And you can already see those chips that I've worn off there. So yeah, it's that easy. I'll keep going. I'll keep videoing for you just to show you how easy it is. Because it's really, it's the simplest technique and it's one of the most fun. And the results are big. Um, I guess the main thing to keep in mind when you're doing this is try and chip in places where it would logically chip. You don't want to go chipping the whole thing. You know, in the centre here you probably wouldn't get many chips. But on the edges of this handle, absolutely that's where you'd get chips. So yeah, that's, that's I guess, really the only art that's involved in this, is logical chip placement. And for tools, you know, they get beaten up and worn, chucked around. I think, you know, have a look at tools in your own garage and you'd get a pretty fair idea of where they get beaten up. I don't know, maybe you keep your tools better than I do. <laughs> I tend to give my tools a hard time. Yeah, look, you get the idea. I'm going to keep going and show you the finished result. And here it is after some scratching. So when you're happy with it, just remember to wipe off or dry, pat it off on a tissue so that it doesn't keep reacting with the paint. Because otherwise, yeah, it might continue to sort of peel off for you. It looks, yeah, it looks okay right now. Certainly looks like a beaten up tool, um, but you would want a little bit more weathering. So I'm going to do a oil wash, and again with my old friend Van Dyke Brown. Um, so just to you know, just an overall wash, pin wash here and there, uh, maybe a couple of splotches on the bigger areas, just to ver give a bit of variety to the paint. But yeah, that for me is a pretty good level of chipped for a tool that's been taken from an old tank and put onto a new tank. I'll just do a little bit of a pin wash now and come I'm back. halfway through my wash and I thought I'd show you guys what it looks like. So I'm just you know, blobbing it on, not doing the whole thing. So I did a moment ago, I said, give it an all over wash. Don't give it an all over wash because the whole thing will just look crap. Um, so just a judicious pin wash, but when you want it to look dirty, you don't have to be too precise. And you can vary whether you put on really intense blobs like that one I just did. Can you see it? No. The really intense blob there, a bit of an intense blob here or some slightly less intense stuff just depending on how much uh, thinner you put in with your Van Dyke brown oil paint and this really does bring out the detail so I'm going to let that dry come back and show you now I'm just going to do a little dry brushing with a slightly lighter shade of the original colour so all I've done is taken the original paint and just add a tiny bit of white to it. You can add white, you can add yellow, it's up to you. But it does bring out a little bit of that detail that's molded on so nicely there. You know, if the good folks at the manufacturers are nice enough to give it to you, make the most of it. Yeah, that's already helping. <laughs> And here is the final result. Um, I'll take a few close-up photos so you can see what they look like, a bit more detail than the video can capture, but, you know, I'm pretty happy with it. Um, so I guess a couple things to note. One, the oil paint takes a little while to dry, so particularly on, say, this jacking block here, don't try and work on it for about 48 hours. No, 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 that's too much. 24 hours, because um, it does take a little while to dry, and if you start putting pigment or something onto it, It'll just wear off the oil paint until it's nice and dry. Uh, second thing to note is quite a lot. I, I went through a few of my old videos, like a few videos that I took during this, and quite a lot I'm saying, oh, it's that simple, or it's that easy, or there's nothing special about it. Lots of, well, there's nothing special about it. And I guess, you know, one, sorry for being repetitive, and two, <laughs> it is that simple, you know, it's really basic techniques. There's nothing really fancy here. It's just, you know, methodical working through. Um, yeah, these are techniques I use every single time. I love them. If they don't work for you, yeah, don't use them. If you want to adapt them for your own use or you don't like the colours I've used, 
go for it guys, you know, mix it up, that's part of the joy of modelling. But yeah, I, I, you know, I have said a lot throughout this. It's that simple, and it really, it is that simple. But yeah, sorry for a repetition. Um, yeah, the last thing I would say is go and check out Panzermeister's video because he's done his own version. Um, his could be a lot different to mine. Uh, I haven't seen his yet. They're both going up at about the same time. So I'm looking forward to seeing what he's got. But um, yeah, it'll be interesting to do. You know, I love doing collaborations. And it'll be interesting to see what he has to say and what his methods are. And um, yeah, possibly we're very similar. Possibly we're crazy different. I don't know. But it will be very interesting to see. It's a helicopter going overhead. So, I hope this has been helpful, and as always, yeah, feel free to check out my blog for more information. And, uh, yeah, it's been a long video, but there's a few techniques involved, and it's been a real pleasure producing this. So, yeah, check out Panzermeister's stuff, and uh, let me know in the comments below if you think I did something well, or if you think I did something poorly, or if you've got a better technique. I'm all ears. I love hearing from you guys. So, until next time, see you later. And uh, I'll put a link in at the very end here for Panzermeister's channel to go and check it out. See you guys. I hope this has been helpful. Bye.